Some people say that the great era of aviation is coming to an end with environmental concerns. fewer travelers, and rising costs. But there are plenty of aircraft manufacturers who aren't listening to the doomsayers and are instead producing crazier and crazier airplanes. From the airplane that looks just like a strange whale, to the plane that's often mistaken for a flying saucer, here's 20 airplanes you won't believe exist. Number 20. The Airbus Beluga Airplane This freight jet was named after a big white whale with a monstrously large head and body by Airbus, Europe's leading airliner manufacturer, so you can see where they were going with the design idea. They even drew a happy beluga whale's mouth on it. This incredible aircraft, like a whale, is great at swallowing things like other planes, space station modules, and other enormous and heavy objects that pass through its massive hinged mouth. It's the world's largest aircraft, and although it lacks the cargo capacity of some of the other planes on our list, it can open its jaws wider than any other. It can still fly at Mach 0.7, or roughly 560 miles per hour, while carrying these large weights and weighing 133 tons when fully packed. The plane's two engines are fueled by a massive fuel tank that stores over 15,000 gallons and allows it to fly above 35,000 feet. It was a challenging aircraft to develop, but it was released in 1994, and one of its main attractions is how easy it is to load and unload. In fact, despite the massive payload within, the average emptying time is just 20 minutes. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. How about this for a weird looking plane? Doesn't look too aerodynamic, but it is set to dominate the skies and the manufacturer promises you can fit your entire house in its head. This is truly incredible, but you'll have to wait at least five years until the house moving plane is available. Then according to the designer, you'll be able to just pack up your home and move wherever you want to, whenever you want. Would you be interested in this kind of plane? Do you think it will be a success? Comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. Avro Canada VZ9AV Avro Car the Avro Canada VZ-9 Avro car was a VTOL aircraft created by Avro Canada as part of a top-secret U.S. military project during the Cold War's early years. The Avro car planned to use the Kawanda effect to generate lift and thrust from a single turbo rotor that blew exhaust out one of the disc's rim. It would have looked like a flying saucer in the air, originally intended to be a fighter-like aircraft capable of very high speeds and altitudes, the project was continually cut down and finally abandoned by the U.S. Air Force. The U.S. Army then took up development for a tactical combat aircraft, essentially a high-performance helicopter. The Avro car was found to have unsolved propulsion and stability difficulties during flight testing, limiting it to a degraded, low-performance flying envelope as a result. The project was shelved in September 1961. The project has been referred to by a variety of different names during its existence. Project Y was the name given to the efforts by Avro, with individual vehicles named Spade and Omega. The United States Air Force subsequently financed Project Y2. When the United States Army joined the project, it was given the name Avrocar and the designation VZ-9 as part of the VZ series of VTOL programs. Number 18. X-29 Forward Swept Wing Jet 
the Grumman X-29 had a forward swept wing, cannered control surfaces, and other revolutionary aircraft technologies that were tried throughout its development. Grumman designed the X-29, and NASA and the U.S. Air Force flew the two aircrafts that were produced. The X-29's airframe's aerodynamic instability necessitated the employment of electronic fly-by-wire control. The X-29 took to the air for the first time in 1984, and two more X-29s were tested in the air until 1991. An X-29 became the first forward-swept wing aircraft to fly at supersonic speed in level flight on December 13, 1985. Four months after its initial flight, the X-29 started a NASA test program. The X-29 proved to be dependable and by August 1986, it was conducting multi-flight research missions lasting over three hours. Because flight tests were meant to avoid maneuvers that may result in departure from controlled flight, such as a spin, the first X-29 was not equipped with a spin recovery parachute. The second X-29 was fitted with such a parachute and tested at extreme angles of attack. The X-29 No. 2 could be maneuvered up to around a 25-degree angle of attack, with a maximum angle of 67 degrees, achieved in a short pitch-up movement. The first X-29, 82-003, is presently on exhibit at the National Museum of the United States Air Force on Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. In the Research and Development Gallery. Number 17. Piaggio P1HH Hammerhead the Piaggio Aerospace P-1HH Hammerhead is a new, cutting-edge, unmanned aerial system developed for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance operations with a performance and operational profile that places it at the top of the UAS male category. The P-1HH Hammerhead is a super male UAS with an unrivaled mix of range, broad operational speeds, quick ascend gradient, high operative ceiling, and diverse diversity of payloads, providing end users with a strong but versatile defense system that excels other mail systems. P1HH Hammerhead is suitable for a broad variety of ISR defense and security tasks and offers unrivaled mission role flexibility, as well as a new frontier of concept of operations for defense. The P1HH Hammerhead Unmanned Aerial Vehicle is based on the successful Piaggio Aerospace P180 Avanti II business aviation aircraft, the world's fastest twin turboprop aircraft with a proven trouble-free 20-year service record and 800,000 flying hours. Number 16. Bartini Bereev VVA-14 in the early 1970s, the Soviet Union created the Bartini Bereev VVA-14, a wing and ground effect aircraft. It was designed to be able to take off from the water and fly at great speeds over long distances, as well as do actual high altitude flights while still being able to glide effectively just above the sea surface, utilizing the aerodynamic ground effect. The VVA-14 was created by Robert Bartini, an Italian born designer, in response to a perceived need to destroy U.S. Navy Polaris missile submarines. The last aircraft was decommissioned in 1987. The prototype VVA-14 was to be developed in three stages by Bartini in partnership with the Bereave Design Bureau. After Bartini's death in 1974, the project faltered and finally came to an end, with the plane having flown 107 times for a total of 103 hours. In 1987, the lone extant VVA-14 No. 19172 was retired to Moscow's Soviet Central Air Force Museum. The airplane was damaged during the shipment to the museum as a consequence of unknown accidents. However, these damages were not corrected. The aircraft is still on display at the museum, disassembled, with the designations 10687 and Aeroflot. Number 15. McDonnell XF-85 Goblin 
The McDonnell XF-85 Goblin is an American prototype fighter aircraft designed by McDonnell Aircraft during World War II. It was designed to operate as a parasite fighter from the bomb bay of the massive Convair B-36 bomber. The XF-85 was designed to protect bombers against enemy interceptor aircraft, a need that was shown during World War II. The Air Force USAAF halted the program after McDonnell completed two prototypes. The XF-85 was developed in response to a request from the United States Air Forces for a fighter to be carried in the Northrop XB-35 and B-36, which were then in development. This was done to solve the current interceptor aircraft's low range in comparison to the larger range of the new bomber types. The XF-85 was a small jet aircraft with a unique egg-shaped fuselage and a forked tail stabilizer design. In 1940, prototypes were created and put through rigorous testing and assessment. The design was promising in flight testing, but the aircraft's performance was inferior to that of the jet fighters it would have to face in battle, and docking proved problematic. The XF-85 was quickly shelved and the prototypes were confined to museum collections. Following the dissolution of the USAAF in 1947, the United States Air Force continued to investigate the notion of parasite aircraft under Project MX-106, Tiptoe Project Ficon, and Project TomTom. -Tom. Number 14. AD-1 Oblique Wing the NASA AD-1 was an aircraft and accompanying flight test program that successfully showed an aircraft wing that could rotate obliquely from 0 to 60 degrees during the flight between 1979 and 1982 at NASA Dryden Flight Research Center in Edwards, California. The AD-1, a tiny subsonic jet-powered research aircraft, was used to showcase the unusual oblique wing. During the study phase, the aircraft was was flown 79 times to assess the fundamental pivot wing idea and collect data on handling characteristics and aerodynamics at different speeds and degrees of pivot. The Bloman Vought P202 suggested by Richard Vought in 1942 was the first known oblique wing design. Robert T. Jones, an aeronautical engineer at NASA's Ames Research Center at Moffett Field, California, subsequently pushed the oblique wing design the transport size oblique wing aircraft, flying at speeds up to Mach 1.4, would offer much higher aerodynamic performance than aircraft with more conventional wings. According to analytical and wind tunnel research, shown started at Ames. Dryden received the AD-1 aircraft in February 1979. It was built on a $240,000 U.S. fixed-price contract by the Ames Industrial Corporation of Bohemia, New York. Boeing Commercial Airplane Seattle, Washington, investigated a geometric arrangement that NASA used to specify the overall vehicle design. Number 13. Lund Class MD-160 Ekranoplane Rostislav Alexeyev created the Lund class Ekranoplan in 1975, and it was employed by the Soviet and Russian fleets from 1987 to the late 1990s. When it was approximately 4 meters above the water's surface, it flew utilizing lift created by the ground effect acting on its enormous wings. Ekranoplans, like the LUN, are not categorized as aircraft, seaplanes, hovercraft, or hydrofoils, despite their resemblance to typical aircraft. Rather, the International Maritime Organization classifies vessels like the LUN class Ekranoplan as maritime ships since they exploit the ground effect to glide just over the water's surface. The ground effect occurs when the wings drive the air downwards, where it is squeezed between the wings and the water surface at the the height of just a few meters above the ocean or ground. This provides lift by increasing the pressure beneath the wings. At high altitudes, this phenomenon does just not exist. LUN is derived from the Russian word meaning Harrier. The MD-160, the only model of this class ever completed, saw service with the Soviet Navy's Caspian Flotilla in 1987. It was decommissioned in the late 1990s and remained idle until 2020 at a Caspian Sea Naval Facility in Kaspisk. Number 12. Goodyear Inflatoplane 
The Goodyear Inflatoplane was an experimental inflatable aircraft built by the Goodyear Aircraft Company, a subsidiary of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, which is best known for the Goodyear blimp. Although military orders were never obtained, the final aircraft showed capable of satisfying its design goals, despite the project's seeming impossibility. Between 1956 and 1959, a total of 12 prototypes were developed, with testing continuing until 1972 when the project was officially cancelled. Taylor McDaniel's inflated rubber glider experiments in 1931 inspired the first notion of an all-fabric inflatable aircraft. The Goodyear inflatoplane was designed and produced in under 12 weeks in 1956, with the intention of being utilized by the military as a rescue plane that could be dropped in a protected container behind enemy lines. A vehicle, jeep trailer, or plane may all be used to convey the 44 cubic feet container. This aircraft's inflated surface was essentially a sandwich of two rubber type materials joined together by a mesh of nylon threads to create an I beam. The nylon absorbed the resisted water as it hardened when exposed to air, giving the plane its form and stiffness. Number 11. Lockheed P-38 Lightning Fork Tailed Devil during World War II, the Lockheed P-38 Lightning was a single-seat, twin-piston-engined fighter aircraft employed by the United States. The P-38 was designed by Lockheed Corporation for the United States Army Air Corps and featured a unique twin-boom design, with a central nacelle holding the cockpit and weaponry. The Luftwaffe dubbed it the Fork-Tailed Devil, while the Japanese dubbed it Two Planes, One Pilot, according to Allied propaganda. The P-38 was utilized in a variety of aerial combat missions, notably as a very successful fighter bomber, a night fighter, and a long-range escort fighter when equipped with drop tanks, in addition to its usage as a general fighter. The P-38 was also utilized as a bomber pathfinder, directing streams of medium and heavy bombers, as well as other P-38s, to their objectives. The P-38, which was used for aircraft reconnaissance, was responsible for 90% of the aerial footage taken over Europe. The P-38 was most successful as the aircraft of America's greatest aces. Richard Bong, 40 victories, Thomas McGuire, 38 victories, and Charles H. McDonald in the Pacific Theater of Operations and the China-Burma-India Theater of Operations, 27 victories, until the deployment of significant numbers of P-51D Mustangs at the conclusion of the war, the P-38 was the premier long-range fighter of the United States Army Air Forces in the Southwest Pacific area. Number 10. Lohm & Voss BV-141 the Blom & Voss BV-141 was a German tactical reconnaissance aircraft that was renowned for its unusual structural asymmetry during World War II. Despite its good performance, the Blom & Voss BV-141 was never ordered into full-scale production due to a lack of the selected engine and competition from another tactical reconnaissance aircraft, the Focke-Wulf FW-189. The German Air Ministry released a demand for a single-engine reconnaissance plane with excellent optical qualities in 1937. Aredo was chosen as the preferred contractor for the AR-198, however the prototype was a failure. The pilot, observer, and rear gunner were placed in a plexiglass glazed crew gondola on the starboard side, similar to that seen on the FW-189, while the fuselage on the port side ran smoothly from from the BMW 132N radial engine to a tail unit. The weight placement seemed to cause a propensity to roll at first inspection, however the weight was equally supported by lift from the wings. The countering of generated yaw was a more involved affair in terms of thrust versus drag asymmetry. It was determined that at low airspeed, it was primarily relieved due to a phenomena known as P-factor, and at normal velocity it was readily managed by trimming. The 141B's tailplane was asymmetrical at initially, with the starboard tailplane essentially eliminated to increase the rear gunner's field of vision and firing. Number 9. 
Vought V-173 Flying Pancake During World War II, the Vought V-173 Flying Pancake was an experimental test plane created as part of the Vought XF-5U program. Both the V-173 and the XF-5U had an unusual all-wing design with flat, disc-shaped hulls, hence the name, that served as the lifting surface. The propellers on the leading edge at the wingtips were driven by two piston engines hidden in the fuselage. In the 1930s, Charles H. Zimmerman was a well-known aeronautical engineer who championed the notion of discoidal aircraft, dubbed the Zimmer Skimmer, and worked on a number of projects, both independently and with the Vought business. The U.S. Navy contacted Zimmerman and promised to support additional research after testing with with scale models, including a remotely operated, electrically driven, large size model known as the Vought V162. The Navy received data and concept documents in 1939, and full scale wind tunnel experiments on full scale models were performed in 1940 to 1941. With the massive propellers actively canceling the drag, causing tip vortices, the disc wing design was able to overcome the built in disadvantages of induced drag formed at the wingtips. The propellers were positioned in such a way that they rotated in the opposite direction as the tip vortices, enabling the plane to fly with a significantly less wing area. The tiny wing allowed for more agility while maintaining structural strength. Number 8. Edgley Optica the Edgley EA-7 Optica is a British, small aircraft intended as a low-cost alternative to helicopters for low-speed observation missions. The Optica has a loiter speed of 130 km per hour and a stall speed of 108 km per hour. The Optica project started in 1974 when John Edgeley founded Edgeley Aircraft Limited, which developed and constructed the first prototype with a small crew. Institutional investors got onto the project in 1982, and a manufacturing line was built up at Wiltshire's Old Serum Airfield. The firm was built up to full production capabilities over the following three years. The aircraft got UK certification, and the first customer aircraft was delivered. Despite this achievement, more funding for the last step of complete production was not available. The company fell into receivership, and John Edgeley was forced to leave. With new owners, the Optica's manufacturing line was finished, and it was put into operation. Number 7. Snecma Coleopter C450 The Snecma C450 Coleopter, French for beetle, descended from Greek for sheathed the wing, was a vertical takeoff and landing, aka VTOL, aircraft developed by Snecma and constructed by Nord Aviation. While construction on the plane went to the test flight phase, the project was never taken farther than that. Several attempts to develop a feasible VTOL aircraft aircraft were made across the globe in the 1950s, including the Coleopter. The design was informed by Snecma's prior experiments with wingless test rigs known as the Atar Volant. The Coleopter was a single-person aircraft with an innovative circular wing that allowed it to take off and land vertically, needing no runway and very little space. The single prototype, which took to the air for the first time in December 1958, was destroyed on its ninth flight on July 25th, 1959. While there were plans to create a second prototype at one point, funding was never secured. Number 6. Hughes H-4 Hercules Spruce Goose the world's largest wooden aircraft, the Spruce Goose, has only flown once. It represents one of humanity's most significant attempts to conquer the sky. It emerged from the need to carry troops and supplies across the Atlantic Ocean in 1942, when German submarines were sinking hundreds of Allied ships. 
Henry Kaiser, a steel magnate and shipbuilder, came up with the concept for a big flying transport and commissioned Howard Hughes to design and construct it. Hughes accepted the task, which was made all the more difficult by the government's restrictions on critical war materials like steel and aluminum. The Hughes flying boat, popularly known as the Spruce Goose, is made entirely of wood and is six times bigger than any other aircraft of the time. The behemoth was renamed H-4 when Henry Kaiser departed from the project in 1944. The first aircraft constructed by Hughes Kaiser was given the designation HK-1. Despite the fact that the aircraft is almost entirely made of birch, it was given the nickname Spruce Goose by the press. Only one flight was made by the winged giant on November 2nd, 1947. During a taxi test, Hughes made the unexpected decision to fly. With Hughes at the controls, the Spruce Goose flew for one minute at a height of 70 feet. Number 5. Lockheed Martin P-791 the Lockheed Martin P-791 is a Lockheed Martin experimental aerostatic and aerodynamic hybrid airship. The P-791 made its maiden flight on January 31, 2006 at the company's flight test facility at U.S. Air Force Plant 42 in Palmdale, California. The P-791 features a tri-hull design with landing cushions in the form of discs. As a hybrid airship, some of the crafts and payloads weight is maintained by aerostatic lift, while the rest is supported by aerodynamic lift. Combining aerodynamic and aerostatic lift is an effort to take use of both aerodynamic craft's height speed and aerostatic craft's lifting capability. The P-791 was created for the U.S. Army's Long Endurance Multi-Intelligence Vehicle Program, however it lost out to Northrop Grumman's HAV-3 design in the competition. Under the name Sky Tug, the P-791 was converted into a civil freight plane with a lift capacity of 18,000 kilograms with plans to size up. Number 4. Lockheed XFV Salmon the Lockheed XFV, also known as the Salmon, was a tail-sitter prototype plane created by Lockheed in the early 1950s to show the functioning of a vertical takeoff and landing fighter for convoy protection. The Lockheed XFV was developed in response to a request by the United States Navy in 1948 for an aircraft that could perform vertical takeoff and landing from platforms erected on the afterdecks of conventional ships. Convair and Lockheed competed for the contracts, but the requirements were changed in 1950 to include a research aircraft that may potentially evolve into a VTOL ship-based convoy escort fighter. Two prototypes were ordered from Lockheed on April 19, 1951, with the designation XF-01. The Sun and Fun Campus Museum at Lakeland Linder International Airport in Lakeland, Florida, now houses the solitary flying prototype. This model was recently restored in the museum's Bueller Restoration Center and is now on exhibit outside. Los Salamitos Army Field in California had the second prototype, which was never finished. Number 3. NASA M2F1 the NASA M2F-1 was a small, unpowered prototype aircraft designed to test the idea of a wingless lift body. It was given the designation M2F-1, with the M referring to manned and the F alluding to flight version due to its distinctive look. NASA Dryden Management authorized a program to develop a lightweight, unpowered lifting body prototype in 1962. It had a plywood shell that was layered atop a tubular steel frame, made in Dryden. The building was constructed in 1963 at Rogers Dry Lake at the end of a tow rope tied to a 1963 Pontiac Bonneville convertible. The M2F1 flew for the first time. Milt Thompson, a test pilot, lifted the M2F1's nose off the ground for the first time on tow on April 5th, 1963. With the M2F1, over 400 ground tows and 77 aircraft tow flights have been completed. 
completed. Following the success of Dryden's M2F1 program, NASA developed and produced two heavyweight lifting bodies based on studies at NASA's Ames and Langley Research Centers, the Northrop M2F2 and the Northrop HL-10, both manufactured by Northrop Corporation and the U.S. Air Force's X-24 program. The lifting body program had a significant impact on the space shuttle program as well. Number 2. Caproni CA-60 the Caproni CA-60 Trenserio, also known as the Novi Pleno or Capronissimo, was a large nine-wing flying boat that was designed to be a 100-passenger transatlantic airliner. There were eight engines and three sets of triple wings on board. The Caproni firm constructed just one copy of this aircraft, which was designed by Italian aviation pioneer Gianni Caproni. In 1921, it was tested on Lake Maggiore, with a short first flight on February 12th or March 2nd. Its second flight took place on March 4th and soon after takeoff, the aircraft crashed into the lake and disintegrated. When the wreck was hauled to shore, the CA-60 was severely damaged and despite Caproni's intentions to reconstruct the plane, the project was quickly abandoned due to its high cost. The few remaining pieces may be seen at Italy's Gianni Caproni Museum of Aeronautics and the Volandia Aviation Museum. During World War I, Gianni Caproni became a well-known aircraft designer and producer. His Caproni aviation firm was particularly successful in the sector of powerful multi-engine bombers. In the second part of 1919, work on the Model 3000, also known as the Trenserio, started. Number 1. NASA Super Guppy one glance at this plane could be enough to convince you that it isn't your typical plane. Is it any wonder that air traffic controllers insisted on having fire trucks, ambulances, and police on hand for the plane's first flight in 1962, knowing well that it would never get off the ground? At the time, the aircraft was called the Pregnant Guppy, and the pilot, Jack Conroy, proved his doubters wrong with a faultless takeoff and landing. Despite it looking like an airship, the Super Guppy had has gained the nickname Frankenplane due to its construction combining parts from a variety of aircraft. The designers opted to develop an aircraft with a single mission to carry large space rocket pieces being produced in California, which were until then shipped throughout the Panama Canal all the way up to launch platforms on the East Coast, a journey of 18 days. NASA was hesitant to put their vital rocket components on this shaky looking aircraft that looked to defy aerodynamics but after one flight with Chief Rocket Engineer Werner von Braun on board, they were convinced. The journey time for rocket parts was cut to only 18 hours. NASA argues that without the guppy, they would not have been able to put a man on the moon. The overweight plane is still flying today, transporting large loads all over the globe. What's your craziest idea for a new airplane? Do you want to fly on that nine-winged Italian plane? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!